You know, listening to know someone is almost impossible. Are you married? <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> it's true. I mean, I love people when they say to me, you know, I want to get to know somebody. And I think to myself, do you even know yourself? And when you think you know somebody, your environment can change and people change. You know, so, but you're, you're right. The core of a person always remains the core. Once certain uh, values come into your life, people remain the same. So when you get married and you're, I, I, I've dealt with many, many women, for example, who have been in really difficult relationships with very nasty men. You know, the ones who beat. And they beat them and they apologize. And then the woman says, oh, it's okay. He'll change, he'll change. He'll never change. Because the core value there is you know, probably insecurity or lack of self-value. You know, so people don't generally change. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a really big hypocrite right now and say that people never change. But you can change. So when I say to someone, when, he, when people say to me that, you know what, I'm going to get this person to make a difference. And I say, no, you can't do that. But what you can do is get that person to make a difference. Because great coaches know that change has to come from the person who is taking the coaching. A great coach, in fact, doesn't teach anything. A great coach never gives advice, ever. I've learned that the hard way because I've been through a pretty interesting experience. How many of you have heard me speak before? How many of you have never heard me speak before? And how many of you don't really care if you've heard me speak before? <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be fun. I don't have a script. I have structure, of course. I know what I'm talking about, hopefully. Just to let you know that this is the first time ever that I'm actually doing an official, an official pre-launch of this program. So this is the first time. So you're very lucky, and I'm very lucky, that we're doing like an official pre-launch of a program called Coach to a Fortune. So please uh, put your right hands up, put it on your left shoulder, and say, great job. <laughs> so thank you very much for coming here today, because it is important for me. This is uh, probably the first time and the last time I'm going to do this particular program. Because I don't intend to do these previews like you're seeing today myself. So, you know, I feel good that you're going to hear me today. And I hope you feel good that you're going to learn something today that's brand new, never been seen before, at least in this country. So, a little bit about myself. I come from London. My parents are from India. Mum and dad are from India. Been in London for over 60 years now. Uh, I don't come from a very rich family. Uh, my mom and dad, my mom was, I think, fairly quite well off. My dad wasn't. Um, my dad came to London with a suitcase, built a small business, built it bigger, built it bigger. We lived in an average, say, three, four bedroom house in a pretty average area. But being average, the mindset wasn't average. The mindset was always extraordinary. When I was being brought up, I was always told, be self-employed, have a second form of income, work hard, work hard. You know, I was earning my pocket money every week by cleaning the house or washing the cars. I started working jobs very, very early. I think my first job was at the age of 11. I was delivering newspapers or delivering cards or something. I was working, I've been working since I was 10 or 11 years old. Now, I didn't have to work because I didn't work for the money. I worked for habits. I also learned how to save money. I was given pocket money, I saved my money. By the time I was 18, I had a bit of money in my hands, you know? so. So from a, from a point of view of values and from a point of view of understanding life, I think I had a pretty good, you know, surrounding. Family's very close, brother, sister's very close, you know, we're strong. And that sometimes does help. But that's not an excuse for you not to do well. Some people are lucky, some people have a difficult upbringing. But, you know, you can make a change if you want to. So at the age of uh, 18, I'm sitting there thinking about my future. I'm not d very good academically. I failed my exams at school, English, math, three times. Um, you know, I don't think that I was a dumb student. I don't think that. But I think everyone thought I was dumb, and I agreed with them. That's the power of a teacher. That's the power with people with uniform, with identity. It's powerful. A doctor says, oh my god, I think you're sick. You become sick. That's the power of uh, a doctor. You go to a psychiatrist and he says, oh, I think your son has attention deficit disorder. You start seeing it in your children. That's the power of labeling. So I got labeled pretty quickly that I'm not going to do very well in life. But lucky for me, I have a good social, I have a good circle of influence, my family. Some of my, a couple of my friends, really strong friends even till today. 
And I look back at the age of 19, 18, 19, I'm thinking to myself, what am I going to do in five years' time? So I think either my, my father must come up to me and said, what are you going to do with your life? Look at you. I was a lazy one. I was the one that used to wake up late and sleep all the time, do no work. I was that person. My brother was very dynamic. Like he's the go-getter and I was the lazy one. So when you have a very dynamic person in your family and you have one who's not so dynamic, the other one looks really lazy. You know what I mean? So, you know, then, you st then they start comparing it. Oh, look, he's so good, he's so good. Look at you, look at you. And then there's comparisons amongst the family members. Oh, look, that, that, that son is doing so well. Why are you not doing well? And that's even, that's the worst one of all, when you get compared. But at the same time, if you get 10 slaps and you get 50 hugs, it's okay. But if you don't get the hugs, then you're in trouble. So I, I, I do believe that kids should be disciplined. I sincerely believe that. But if you discipline them once, you have to give them 10, ten times the affection. Then they become your friends and they listen to you. So I, at the age of 18, 19, I'm thinking, you know, what am I going to do with my life? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a degree. I'm going to graduate. I'll get a job. And when I'm 60, 65, I'll retire with a Rolex watch, maybe in a high management position, and life is going to be great. And then I look to all the people that are 65 and retired with Rolex watches, and I think, I don't want that at all because their life was shit, it was rubbish, it was garbage. Because all they did for 45 years was work, 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 pay a mortgage, pay a mortgage, pay a mortgage, get the kids married off, send them to school, and then end of discussion. What a boring life, anyone does that, everyone does that. So the only difference was that somebody may live in a three bedroom and somebody may live in a five bedroom. Or maybe a 10 bedroom. They're still gonna use the one bedroom. So I looked at that and I thought, okay, no, I want more than that. I want more. I want to be able to be a difference. I want to be different. I want to make a difference. I want to be someone that can leave some impact. See, because when people tell me I can, I've taken care of my family, I think, so what? But with all due respect, who cares? You had the babies. You take, you take care of them. End of discussion. When someone says to me, I've done really well at work, and I think, so what? You're supposed to do well at work. That's why you're working. When someone tells me I've done really good for business, I think, so what? Because you've started a business, you're supposed to do well. But when someone tells me that I have an impact on other people to make a difference in their life, and I say, whoa, that is so cool. Because true value comes from the ability to contribute to other people's lives, not your family, because that's a must, who cares? But when you start contributing to other people's lives and making a difference, either through helping them make money, or helping them with advice, or helping them change themselves, then you are a person of true value.